the Moki i7s is one of the most powerful Android gaming handheld device. This device also doubles as a smartphone, however this was designed around gaming first. Now the Moki i7s was a 6 inch Android gaming handheld with a Snapdragon 710 SoC, 6GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. This device also had a 6000 mAh battery and it had Android 8.1 as its operating system. The screen of this device was a full HD 6 inch IPS touchscreen. Liquid cooling was also um, included in the design of this handheld. Now when we're talking about the whole form factor of the Moki i7s, this was a pretty comfortable device to hold and game on. It wasn't that heavy in the hand and it was comparable to something like a PlayStation Vita. The Moki i7s was powerful enough to run everything from NES all the way up to GameCube. So you could play your GameCube games on this device at like 1x, some games at 2x resolution and they would give you like full speed. Now not every game was compatible with the Moki i7s. Some games you would definitely have graphical glitches and you'd have um, optimization issue and some games probably wouldn't boot. But for most of the GameCube library, you could have played on the Moki i7s. With that 6000 milliamp hour battery that was included in this device, you could game on this for like anywhere from six to like seven and a half hours non-stop so the battery life was pretty good and what i like about the battery on this device is that it was interchangeable so you could open up that back plate and swap out the battery if your battery ever goes bad also when you open the back plate you can add a 4g sim so you can make calls on this device just like how you would on a smartphone and you can also add data to the device so that you can play your favorite mobile multiplayer games on the go such as PUBG or call of duty mobile it also had a expansion slot in the back of the device for a micro SD card. And I think at the time this supported up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Also on the back of this device was dual stereo speaker. And this also supported hi-fi audio, which gave you some pretty good sound while I'm um, playing video games on this device. It also sported a headphone jack, so if you wanted to just use a um, 3.5mm headphone, you could do that with the Moki i7s. Fast charging was also a thing which on the Moki i7s as it supports um, Quick Charge 3.0. There was a built-in key mapper software on this um, handheld that you could use to map your physical controls to on-screen controls for a Android game. So for example, if a game like Genshin Impact did not support um, controls, you could just map those keys so that you can play the game with the physical control. There was also a, also in this software, I should say, there were presets for like different games. So for like popular games like PUBG, you could just download a profile and everything would be mapped and it would work perfectly. The joysticks on this was really good. This was like a 360 degree um, joystick and it was very comfortable. However, I don't think it encompassed L3 and R3. I'm not sure if these were um, clickable um, joysticks. What I can confirm was that we didn't have any R2 or L2 um, buttons on this device. And I think that's where it was lacking because if you're going to make a gaming smartphone with full controls why you're gonna leave out some button functions and some buttons completely like this device definitely could have housed a r2 and l2 button and they could have added um clickable joysticks however on the joysticks i'm not 100 percent sure if they were clickable or not apart from that though the controls were pretty solid uh, as i said the joysticks were pretty good the d-pad was pretty nice and it was really good for like fighting games and those face buttons were quite unique um it was like from some chinese symbols that would re represent like the sun the moon earth and i think fire or water um but 
overall the controller design on this wasn't too bad i just think they could have added those few extra buttons which would have made the device complete the device also supported bluetooth and with this you could peer like a bluetooth keyboard or mouse to um play those games so you could if you want to play like a FPS, um, I don't know if you're going to game stream or you're going to stream a game from like your PC over to this handheld. And if you wanted to use a keyboard and mouse, that was something that you definitely could have done. And the built in software on this um, device would allow you to do that very seamlessly and very easily with keyboard and mouse support. As we talk about like emulation, like one of my favorite system. Um, that I would love to emulate on this or that I would enjoy emulating on this would be PSP. I think this device is perfect for PSP emulation with it being able to play probably around the full library of PSP games because even games like um, God of War Chains of Olympus would play um, pretty good on this. You could play it at a 2x resolution on the Snapdragon 710 um, SoC that was in this device. So. It was very good for PlayStation Portable and also for GameCube, like most games you could play. So this was like one of the best handhelds that you could have picked up. Um, the only drawback to this handheld, well not the only, but one of the biggest drawback to this handheld was the price. Now this was selling for about $399 at the time of release. So most people would have gone with a Nintendo Switch instead of this device because you get like better games and you get like um, full controller support with it, clickable um, R3 and L3 and you get that R2 and L2 buttons and also you get some high quality games from Nintendo and you'd get um, current generation games so most people would pick up like a Nintendo Switch or a Nintendo Switch Lite over this device this was being sold for the same price of a PlayStation 4 Pro at the time which was $400 so it was a hard sell I think if the price was a bit lower then yeah this device could have sold a lot better and we may have seen a successor so when it comes on to Android handles I think pricing is a big factor and a lot of um, these Chinese company they need to take that into consideration because not everyone is going to drop $400 on this device. I understand that it is also a smartphone. However, this is something that is a niche. And if somebody wants a smartphone, they'll just buy a smartphone. What they actually want is a dedicated Android gaming handheld. So for the Android gaming market, I think that $200 to $250 max is where any of these handles should be coming in. I don't think anything should be going past that $250 um price mark because it's going to be a tough sell um when we step into that territory and as we see right now the steam deck is coming out and that's starting at 300 dollars. so you have other devices like the odin and um the gpd xp that are coming out in 2021 and 2022 and anything above 250 300 it's going to be a hard sell like you can pick up a nintendo switch um, for $300 or a Switch Lite for $200 and you can pick up a Steam Deck for $300 so why are you going to buy a less powerful device for more money so I know there's a big demand for Android devices because a lot of people love Android devi devices so I just think once they price these devices um, correctly then we would have a successful um, Android market for um, Android gaming handles. But that's just going to do it for the video here today. Um, please go ahead, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about the Moki i7s. Um, let me know if this was a device that you were interested in back when it released. And please drop your comments down below. Like the video if you liked it. Share it with a friend who likes tech. And until then, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.